This video is the first of two which will discuss how to reduce the cost of constructing a new or remodeling an existing house. Hi, I'm Daniel of Daniel Clark Architect. This video is for anyone considering building a new house or remodeling an existing one and is concerned about the excessively high cost of construction. So this video is going to come in two parts. The first part is going to summarize a lot of the techniques that people will generally use to bring down the costs of construction for a home or for remodeling an existing house. The second video is going to discuss design strategies, 10 design strategies that you can use to bring down the cost of construction substantially without resorting to sacrifice or compromise on the quality of your home. If you're considering building a new high performance house, passive house or net zero, or even just a typical custom house, you're looking at a substantial cost. Last year, for example, the cost of building a custom home in Vancouver was between $435 and $1,100 dollars per square foot of floor area. Even at the low end, $430 for a 2200 square foot, for example, that's almost a million dollars. How are we going to deal with that? The internet is full of tips and techniques that I found to bring down the cost of constructing a house and I'm going to go through those for you in this first video and discuss why I don't think that they're really ones you want to pursue first. To start off with, you're basically facing a dilemma. Do you build right now when the costs are high or do you wait until later when costs maybe come down? Chances are the costs are not going to come down. The first technique that a lot of people default to is using less expensive finishes. Selecting less expensive finishes finishes and fixtures does bring down the cost of construction. Compared to the overall costs, you're compromising the quality of your experience, but really not bringing down the cost a heck of a lot. Less obvious and a little bit more difficult to swallow is a smaller house. This does bring down the construction cost. But if, for example, you were to bring down the size of the house by, let's say, 10%, the cost of construction is not going to draw 10%, maybe only 5%. So another strategy you could use is a lower quality house. There are a lot of very economical builders out there. All of the things being equal, yes, it can be substantially less to build. It'll be less costly, but it'll also be the least comfortable and it'll have the shortest lifespan. You end up with higher maintenance down the road. So another option available is a production house, a house that a builder or a developer will build because they do a lot of them. You might have a stretch of 10, 20 houses on a block that are identical. If it's a custom home builder, maybe the house isn't really truly custom, but you can pick and choose from a few different options. This option does bring down the cost of construction substantially. The cost might be only half or possibly even a third of what a truly custom house is. It will have a shorter lifespan. It won't be truly tailored to your family's needs, and it's going to look like everybody else's house. Another strategy to consider is cheaper land. If you don't want to go for this waterfront property perched on a cliff and you're willing to go for something maybe in the suburbs, that'll give you more money that you can spend on the house. Consider the quality of your life in that neighborhood. Maybe it's still going to be great for your family, but ultimately it's up to you to decide. Another technique, finding a property with a house already on it. Generally speaking, the bank is gonna lend you or be willing to lend you more money if there's already a house there. What that gives you is more money to use on building a house. If you're going to demolish that existing house, bear in mind that you're paying for not just the cost of demolition, but also the cost of waste disposal, and that could be complicated by possible asbestos or mold on site. Those additional costs could increase the cost of demolition so that you you end up not actually having more money to work with. So along the same vein as buying a property with an existing house that you want to demolish, you could find an existing property and an existing house that you're going to remodel, to transform, to suit your family's needs. So depending on the condition of that existing house and the extent to which you want to remodel it, you may find that it ends up costing you more than building from scratch. Deterioration or possible building code compliance issues could end up bringing the 
bill of upgrading that house to more than you had originally planned on a totally different tack is going to a bunch of builders and getting each of them to provide a price to build you the house. Ordinarily, under normal market conditions, that might work. But right now, all of the builders are super busy and the costs are so volatile that for any of them to give you a fixed cost, each of them is going to be padding it to account for possible cost increases later on. In this market, the competitive bidding is not going to work out for you to save money. Another technique is finding a local builder. Now the local builder will have a good network of sub trades, relationships with them that he works with on an ongoing basis. So you will get better pricing and more reliable performance. Wherever you do choose to build, if you're going with a local builder, he's able to give you the quality and the service that you need. You could go with a local architect. That saves you having to pay for site visits. You know, if the architect is on the mainland and you're going to build out on the island, you don't have to pay for all of the travel. You want an architect who's going to be able to give you the service that you really need. There is the DIY route. A lot of people think if I manage the project myself, I can save on those project management costs. You don't have the relationships with a lot of the sub trades. In this volatile construction market, trying to do it yourself is going to land you in some hot water. It's not going to end up saving you the kind of costs you want. Another strategy is just to make your house really simple, really plain, maybe only one material on the outside. Think again, every time you come home, this is what you have to look at. That's up to you. Okay, to summarize, the top techniques that you might find on the internet to bring down the costs of constructing a new house or remodeling an existing one are going with less expensive finishes, going with a smaller house size, the lower quality house, maybe buying a production home from a home builder or a developer, cheaper properties, or a property with an existing house. You could remodel an existing house competitive bidding, getting prices from a number of builders, select a local builder. You could also select a local architect, self-managing the project, and I highly advise against this. And last, a simpler design for your house. So these are a lot of common techniques people will use to bring down the cost of construction for their house. However, in part two of this video, I'm going to go into 10 design strategies that I recommend using that gives you a much better house and you're bringing down that construction cost. If you'd like to discuss either of these techniques that I've gone through in this video, or would like to learn more about the ones in my next video, feel free to get in touch with me by booking a project consultation call.